Do you know what this is right here? Of course you do. It's the world's number one selling book, the Bible. Yay! No book in the history of humanity has ever been more dissected, studied, scrutinized, poked and prodded, and challenged as the Bible. Some say that this book can change your life and lead you to eternal salvation. Others say it's just a book of fairy tales and fiction, no different than a sci-fi novel. So which is it? Can we trust the Bible? Well, I think so, and I'm gonna share with you five reasons why. Let's take a minute and find out what they are. I'm Chris Este, and this is Prophetic Minutes. The first reason we can trust the Bible is because of the miraculous way it was written. Though many would consider the Bible as one book, in reality it's actually 66 books compiled together by around 40 different authors. These books were written in three different languages over a period of around 1500 years and on three continents. Many of these authors never even met each other and came from various backgrounds living under different governments with contrasting cultures and systems of philosophy. These authors were kings, shepherds, scientists, priests, prophets, attorneys, fishermen, an army general, and a physician. Miraculously, none of these vastly different authors significantly contradict each other. There's an astonishing consistency between the content of these books. It's like taking the paintings of 40 different artists that were painted over a period of 1500 years without any communication with each other and connecting them to produce the Mona Lisa. Sounds impossible, right? Well, the world's most famous book was compiled that way. The Bible even says that the only way that was possible is because the Holy Spirit was the real author guiding all 40 authors on what to say. Pretty miraculous, huh? The second reason we can trust the Bible, and specifically the New Testament, is because it meets all of the criteria historians require in order to verify authentic sources. When historians are looking for sources, they are looking for several things. First, they want primary and secondary sources, meaning sources that the writer either knew the person themselves or were close to someone who knew that person. Second, they want authentic sources, obviously not fake ones. Third, they want early sources, the closer to the event the better, so that the story doesn't get muddled up over time. Fourth, they want multiple sources that corroborate with each other. And fifth, they do not want anachronisms. Yeah, I had to look that word up. An anachronism is an error in chronology in which a person, object, or event is assigned a date or period other than the correct one. Historically accurate sources don't mess up times, dates, customs, or locations. For example, if you read in a history book that George Washington ordered an Uber on his iPhone to cross the Delaware, you would know that's a bunch of baloney. Four score and seven. Four score and se Four score and seven years ago, our forefathers. Ah, come on, who's calling me? What? Hello? Yes? Uh, wait, our Uber drivers won't be able to take us across the Delaware? Now we have to go by boat? Oh man, just my luck. Alexander Hamilton? Hey, Alex, your DoorDash delivery is here. Just remember to get me my chicken nuggets with extra barbecue sauce, all right? Like I said, if you read that version of history in your history book, you would know that it is completely bogus. Incredibly, the New Testament doesn't have any anachronisms. The dates, the people, and places are all historically accurate. Not only that, but the New Testament has multiple sources, primary and secondary sources, and early sources. Most of the sources of the New Testament are written within a few decades after the resurrection of Jesus. These are considered early sources, especially compared to the earliest accounts of Alexander the Great that were written some 300 years after his death. But yet no one questions the veracity of his life story. And you have to wonder, why did it take them so long to write down his story? Men, I could sense that my death is imminent. Promise me one thing. Promise me that as soon as I die, you will write down all of my accomplishments so that the world will never forget. Alexander the Great. Yes, sir, I'm gonna get right on that. Ooh. 300 years later. Look what I found. I can't believe it. This is a to-do list from my great, 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 great grandfather. And it says to write down Alexander's story so that no one will forget. 
Oh no, what was his last name? Alexander the Golden? Alexander the Garrulous? Alexander the Groovy? The Genial? The Grouchy? The Giddy? The Grotesque? The Grand? The... The Googly? Unlike Alexander the Great's earliest sources being several hundred years old, most of the New Testament sources are around 30 to 60 years after the resurrection. However, there is one source in 1 Corinthians that dates back only five years after Jesus' resurrection, which is incredibly early. Historically speaking, the New Testament is the world's most reliable historical document on the life of Jesus anywhere on the planet. The third reason we can trust the Bible is secular history validates many of the stories in the Bible. Biblical archaeology is constantly finding new information concurring with stories and places from the Bible that skeptics once thought didn't exist. Skeptics didn't believe there was a Hittite nation or about the cities of Nineveh and Sodom, but archaeology has confirmed all three did exist. Critics said that certain Bible characters like Belshazzar and Sargon didn't exist either, but now archaeology has confirmed their existence also. In my last video, Seven Indisputable Facts Proving the Resurrection of Jesus, I shared that there are other non-biblical secular historians that concur about the life of Jesus, Josephus, Tacitus, and Pliny the Younger. If for some reason the New Testament didn't exist, based on the writings of these historians, we would still know seven facts about Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus was a Jewish teacher, he performed healings and exorcisms, some people believed he was the Messiah, he was rejected by Jewish leaders, he was crucified by Pontius Pilate in the reign of Tiberius, his followers spread to Rome by AD 64, men, women, slave and free worship him as God. And why did they worship him as God? Because of the resurrection. I couldn't have said it better myself. If you want to watch the full video, click here. Hey, Chris. Chris, I can't believe it's you. I mean, it's me, but it's last episode me. Oh, you're doing great so far. You're my favorite YouTuber. I'm your biggest fan. And let me just say, you look way more handsome in person. Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks. But don't get all weird. And the reason I'm here is because you always forget to mention to our viewers to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, leave a comment below, and hit the notification bell so you know when our new videos come out. Sheesh, was that so hard to do? Do I have to come into every video to remind you? Uh, uh, okay, bye, but can I at least get your autograph? It, it's for my son! The fourth reason we can trust the Bible is the fulfillment of prophecy. One of the reasons God gives us Bible prophecy is so that we can trust in Him when we see these prophecies fulfilled. There are hundreds of prophecies in the Bible, and many have already been fulfilled. Conservative estimates say that Jesus alone fulfilled around 300 prophecies. The Bible predicted four world empires to arise, as we saw in my video, who will be the next superpower. It also predicted King Cyrus to be the warrior to capture Babylon. It predicted that after Babylon's destruction, it would never be inhabited again. It predicted Egypt would never again have a commanding position among the nations. And it predicted earth-shaking calamities and fear toward the end of time. These are just a few of the already fulfilled biblical prophecies, and each one helps us to trust in God's Word. The fifth reason we can trust the Bible is the testimony of a changed life. What other book can you think of that after reading it, the drunkard becomes sober, the immoral pure, the addicted free, the profane reverent, the fearful courageous, and the vicious kind? I personally know people who were once hardened criminals in prison, people who were addicted to drugs and alcohol whose lives have been transformed by simply reading the Bible. What other book can change people like that? It's certainly not the dictionary, Moby Dick, or Harry Potter. Done. I just finished the dictionary. I'm completely changed. I'm no longer going to do drugs or alcohol or gambling anymore. I'm a new man. I'm metamorpho- Met oh, Wait. Yeah, that's never happened. Only the Bible has the power to change someone's life. No wonder owning a Bible is illegal in 52 countries around the world. It's not just a book about information, it's a book about transformation. My prayer for you today is that you will see the Bible with new eyes and give it a chance. Not only is it a book with real historical veracity, but more importantly, it's a book with real spiritual tenacity to transform the reader's life.
This book is so transformational because unlike all of the other books in the world, the author of this book personally guides its readers every time they read it. I hope that the author of the world's most popular book will guide your life as well. I'm Chris Este and thank you for watching Prophetic Minutes. Alexander, where are my chicken nuggets? Well, I'm Alexander, but I don't have any chicken nuggets. I'm the Uber driver for a Mr. Washington. Oh, great. Well, they said you guys wouldn't be able to make it. Well, the only problem is I can only take one passenger. <laughs> well, gentlemen, looks like you guys are going to have to cross the Delaware without me. Good luck and Godspeed. I just love this revisionist history. <laughs>